Hey y'all, it's Allison Fleck with Bloom Culture. In today's tutorial, we are going to be talking about how to use chicken wire as a foundation to build your arrangement. You'll want to start with about a 12 inch long by six inch wide piece of chicken wire. Here I have folded it in on itself. You don't want to smush it all together or crumple it, but you want to lightly and gently fold it into a ball and make sure that there is chicken wire filling the space of the vase. Chicken wire creates a great foundation to hold the stems in place and provides a really wonderful alternative to floral foam. Once you've got your chicken wire set, I usually start with greenery. Here I've shown how to make the most out of your greenery by breaking one stem down into multiple stems. Next I start arranging the greenery. I typically address each side of the vase and go from there. another great way to get the most bang for your buck by breaking down one piece of ruscus into two pieces. Once I have a few key pieces of green replaced, I move on to the floral. Now depending on your floral recipe and your floral design, some designs have a lot more greenery and less floral or vice versa. Here I've started with spray roses. Before placing them, I clean up the stems, take off any guard petals or chewy petals, and trim off any offshoots or sprays that I can save to use later. I come in with some snapdragons. I like to use linear flowers such as the snapdragons or stock fairly early in the design to help create the shape of my arrangement. If you've watched some of my other tutorials, I talk about designing in an X pattern or shape. I still use that same approach in centerpieces as it helps when I'm not sure where the next placement should go. I alternate between the front and back of the arrangement when placing. And yes, I usually have a front and a back. I find it's easier to arrange when you focus on the arrangement only having two sides. After the snapdragons, I move on to my roses. I play with varying heights to give the arrangement depth. It may feel weird at first to have a long stem length, but keep going. If it feels too long, you can always snip it back a bit, but you can never add stem length to your stem once you've cut it. Next, I place our focal slash more expensive flowers. As you can see, I sometimes need to gently twist the rose stem to help guide it into the chicken wire. If the wire gives you a bit of resistance, that's actually a good thing because it means you've built a great foundation to hold your arrangement up. Now working through arranging, you'll find that you'll need to move blooms because they either aren't working or you just don't like the placement, and that's totally normal and fine to do. Nothing is set in stone, and just try to have fun with it. Towards the end, I like to place my specialty blooms like a ranunculus. They have a more whimsical feel to them, and I like them to have a longer stem length to stand out among the other blooms. I realize it's hard to see what I'm talking about with the stem length from a bird's eye view, so here's a picture of the arrangement from the side to show you exactly what I'm talking about with the varying lengths.
Okay, so once you've placed your filler flower to cover in any holes, I typically go back into the arrangement and if I have any unused greenery from the recipe, I like to use that to fill in areas or to add length to areas of the arrangement. I like to use longer pieces of greenery towards the end so they stay in place. Same with a stem or two of flowers that are longer in length. Thank you.